What's up everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about five habits that helped me get in shape by 20 years old. And when I mean getting me in shape, I mean both physically and mentally as well. Now I'm going to make this video as real as possible without any bullshit or without any unrealistic advice. Because I know a lot of people will say, oh, you know, you got to wake up at 5 a.m. You got to do this, you got to do that. I understand that you're young, you're human, you make mistakes, you're not perfect. And I'm going to take that into consideration when explaining to you these habits that helped me get in shape by 20 years old. Now, please make sure you stay to the end of the video because every single habit I will be talking about correlates with each other. And the last habit I'll be talking about is a very enforcement one. So make sure you stay till the end. So yeah, that being said, let's jump in to the first habit. So the first habit is pretty simple and straightforward. And that is sleeping fairly early and waking up fairly early. Now, like I said, I'm not expecting you to wake up at five in the morning and go to sleep at 9 a.m. No, but I'm saying sleep at a reasonable time to the point where the next day you wake up early enough to have a long enough day to make it productive for yourself, to feel energized, etc. Now the reason this is habit number one is because you getting enough sleep sets you up for the whole entire day. You won't be able to do anything else in your day unless you have enough time and you're feeling energized enough. And the only thing that will make you feel that way is your sleep. And that's the only thing that will establish that time that you have for the rest of the day. Now, personally for me, what I find is realistic, but also reasonable enough to get enough sleep and also feel fulfilled the next day is sleeping before midnight. This way you ensure that if you get nine hours of sleep, you're at least waking up by 9 a.m. the next day, which is early enough and allowing you to have plenty of time throughout your day. Now at the latest, I would say sleep at 1 a.m. This way still, if you get nine hours of sleep, you wake up at 10 a.m., which is still kind of early, not super early, but it's fair enough. And trust me, you'll see, and I'm sure you've seen this experience as well. When you wake up super late, let's say you wake up at like 1 p.m., you already feel very unproductive from the get-go. You wake up and you're already like, okay, I wasted half my day. I don't really want to do anything for the rest of my day. But when you wake up at like 7, 8, 9 a.m. in the morning, you feel fulfilled. You feel like, okay, I had a nice sleep, but I still woke up early. I have a full day ahead of me. So you're already setting your day up right and you're already setting your mentality right going into your day. Because now you know you have so much time. You have so much time to do so many things, to be productive, to achieve certain goals that you have to work out, etc. So sleeping and waking up early is the first habit that you should start implementing in your day-to-day -day life and is what will help you achieve the other habits going into your day. Now, getting into habit number two, that is to implement a healthy workout routine. And what I mean by a healthy workout routine is a workout routine that helps support your fitness goals, but at the same time, it makes it enjoyable and it makes you live a healthy lifestyle. So one big mistake that a lot of people do when it comes to their workout routine is that they dedicate too much focus on the goal that they want, whether that is to lose weight or to gain weight, that they don't really become happy with themselves right now and they work out strictly for that goal. But instead of that, establish a workout routine where you're doing it to enjoy the process. Yes, to get the results eventually, but enjoying the process, making it efficient, targeting different muscle groups every day and going along with your journey, not trying to rush it too much and being down on yourself because you're not achieving your goals yet, but taking it step by step, working out every single day, taking two to three rest days a week and just moving forward with that. You want to make working out a part of your lifestyle. And so if you make it too hard on yourself, you won't be able to make it a part of your lifestyle. It's something you will let go easily and you will quit easily. Similar to brushing your teeth. It's without question. Every single time you wake up and you brush your teeth, it's part of your lifestyle. So make working out the exact same thing. Make it a part of your lifestyle. At a certain time of your day, you go to the gym or you go to the calisthenics park or at home or in your room and you do a 30 minute to an hour and a half workout. Just to simply exercise, get your heart beat up, increase your circulation, feel fatigued. It's good for your body and you do that on a day to day basis. Now, what I mean by making it enjoyable is that there's certain training styles that you might not like and there's certain routines that you might not like. So for example, when I first started to work out, I used to go to the gym every single day, lift weights and do that on a day to day basis. But it became very repetitive for me and I didn't like it. I was lacking motivation. So instead, I found a new training style that I enjoyed that involved more calisthenics and bodyweight training, as well as hybrid. So mixing it in with weightlifting as well. And that was something I enjoyed a lot more because the progression of that, like learning handstands, handstand push-ups, muscle-ups, etc., was enjoyable to me. And so that allowed me to stay consistent with my workouts and my workout routine. So just make it a part of your lifestyle. Find a way to enjoy working out. Find a training style that you enjoy. Find a time of day that you enjoy. Find something about it that you enjoy, whether that is listening to music while you work out, doing it with friends. Just make it in such a way where it's enjoyable 
This way you can stay consistent and you can make it a part of your lifestyle. Now, by the way, I know working out can sometimes be complex. You might not know what's best for you. I do have a training app where all my programs are there to help you get in shape. So it's programs for all levels, beginner, intermediate, advanced. It's programs that require weights and no weights, so calisthenics and body weight training. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching there as well. I have nutrition guides and more. So you can click the top link in my description. Join my app right now. Uh, if you want. So now getting into habit number three, that is to understand your nutrition and what is right for you. Because at the end of the day, your nutrition is your fuel. It's what allows you to feel good. It's what allows you to support your energy levels along with your sleep. It's what allows you to gain weight. It's what allows you to lose weight. It's what allows you to live. So understand it. I think understanding your nutrition is very, very important to your well-being, but also to supporting your fitness goals and helping you get in shape. I mean, your nutrition is 80% of your fitness results. So it doesn't matter if you're working out every single day. If your nutrition isn't right, you won't be achieving the goals that you're looking to achieve. So I'll give you a good example with my thought process when I got into like understanding nutrition and I got into fitness. So for example, when I was looking to gain weight and gain muscle, I needed to understand that I have a calorie maintenance and you do as well. A calorie maintenance is how many calories your body needs to maintain your weight you are at right now. If you eat above that, you will gain weight and if you eat below that, you will lose weight. And by the way, if you want to find your calorie maintenance, just go on Google, search up calorie maintenance calculator, and then put in your information and you'll find it. So anyways, I found my calorie maintenance and I decided to eat above that because I wanted to gain weight. But it's not only the calories, it's what makes up the calories. Because I can have a slice of cheesecake that will give me 500 calories, but a bunch of sugar, a lot of carbs, and a lot of protein. Or I can have a nice piece of chicken that will also be 500 calories, but we won't have as much sugar, won't have as many carbs, and will be packed with protein that will help me rebuild my muscles bigger and stronger than they were before. So anyways, you get what I mean. Once you understand your nutrition, then you can determine how much and what you should be eating to achieve your goals. How many calories you should have, how much protein you should have, what foods you should have that provide you with more nutrients, how many times a day you should eat, etc. The only way you'll achieve your fitness results is if your nutrition is right. Now getting into habit number four, that is to get a hobby for yourself and to stay consistent. And I can't tell you how important this is. Getting a hobby allows you to stay creative, gives you a sense of purpose. It allows you to have something to look forward to. It allows you to have something to work towards, to improve. So it's super important to have a hobby that you enjoy and to do that every single day for your well-being. So for me, I really enjoyed calisthenics. So I really enjoyed working on my skill training, improving my handstands and muscle ups, but I also enjoyed content creation. So editing videos, creating videos, informing and helping others. That was my hobby and I worked on perfecting it. It allowed me to stay creative. It allowed me to expand it, work towards it, and it gave me a sense of purpose. Now your hobby doesn't need to be working out related. It can be anything. It could be gaming, it could be reading books, it could be writing, it could be drawing, it could be playing a certain type of sport such as basketball, soccer, whatever. Just find a hobby that you enjoy and make sure you implement that into your everyday routine because it's so important for your well-being, both physically and mentally. And who knows, maybe eventually you'll turn your hobby into your career because you can only really master the things that you love because you'll put so much effort and energy into it without really seeing it as hard work because you're enjoying it, it's your hobby. Finally, habit number five. One of the most important ones is to simply do bad things, bad things, in moderation. Now the reason I'm putting bad in quotations is because they're not really bad if you do it in moderation, but they are bad if you do it too much. And the reason I'm putting this as habit number five and I'm putting this on this list is because whenever people try to tell you what to do to improve your life, they make it too perfect. So you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. What I'm telling you is that you can still do the things that people tell you not to do. Go out and party, eat junk food, sleep in and wake up late have an unproductive day as long as you do it in moderation. If anything, I recommend that you do that. It's good to give yourself a break and just to do things that don't require much effort. But again, key word, moderation. So for example, the way I went about it is if I knew that, you know, two nights ago I went out partying and I drank, then if I knew that someone invited me to a party this weekend to drink again, I wouldn't do it because I know I did it two days ago. I don't want to do it again. Same thing with waking up late. If I knew that I woke up late two days in a row, then I would tell myself, okay, no, for the next week, two weeks, I'm going to get my sleep schedule right, I'm going to sleep early, wake up early, and same thing with eating junk food. You know, if I knew that for the past two days I was with friends eating junk food and it was a great time, I would know that, okay, now moving forward, I'm going to get my nutrition right again, I'm going to eat good, this way I can feel good moving forward. That is a healthy relationship with bad habits and it's important to do them in moderation. That is it for the five habits that I did to get in shape by 20 years old. I really recommend that you implement these habits and again and not making them too complex for yourself but more implementing them as sort of your lifestyle. I wish you the best of luck. I'm always here if you have any questions and uh, yeah if you want more videos make sure to subscribe to stay tuned. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video. It does mean a lot to me. 
And that being said, I will see you in the next video.